This conference will now be recorded. All right. A very warm welcome to everyone. Um, both folks from who have joined us from India and uh, from from the US. I'm audible, guys. Yes. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, welcome once again. And uh, what we look forward to is uh, today's demo session of mobile performance testing, which would involve a uh, elaborate discussion as to what we are supposed to head to, what are what we're supposed to be headed towards, and uh, what's in store. Uh, that's what is the agenda for our today's session. Uh, before we begin, let's have a quick shout out of names as to uh, maybe you can introduce yourself. A quick brief doesn't have to be long. Uh, you, can, you can you can mention your name, you can mention your years of experience, and uh, maybe currently what you're doing, currently what you're working with, or which company you're working with. Yeah. Maybe we can go order wise, or uh, yeah, name wise we can go. Uh, Balakrishna, I see, is first in line, so. Yeah. Yeah, myself, Bala Champani, working for Ernest Chandan at the world. Hello. All right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Bala. Thank you. So, your years of experience? More than 10 plus. Okay, great. And is that all into performance, Bala? Close to 8 to 9 years. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Hari. Uh, Hari Krishna. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Himanshu? Hi, I'm Himanshu. Uh, I have an IT experience of around six, 17 years and around 12 years in performance. I work with the company Sonata. I'm based in New Jersey, USA. Okay. You're based in New Jersey, USA. Okay. Welcome, uh, welcome, Imanshu. Thank you. Okay. I see Murli. Yeah. Good morning. This is Murli. I'm pressure. I'm looking for a job. Okay. Welcome, Murli. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, is he just winning? Yeah, hi, good morning. Yeah, uh, Tejas winning, we are doing a quick round of introduction as to how many years of experience and uh, where we are working. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I've, uh, I've been into performance testing for around 10 years now. I uh, performance testing and engineering. Uh, I was working with TIPCO for around eight years and I'm working with SAS. Uh, since a year now. All right. Welcome, Tejaswini. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Vikas. Yeah. Hi. Good morning. Uh, I have been in performance testing since last 13 years, and uh, I'm working with One Chill Softwares. Okay, great. All right, uh, great. Thanks, guys, for introducing ourselves. Uh, so, what we are seeing is like a majority of people are uh, maybe 10 years and above experienced. Uh, and uh, we have a mix of, uh, we have one person who is a fresher. So, that kind of uh, 
will help us to kind of gauge the audience and you know uh, deliver the content accordingly all right okay uh, how many of us have actually worked in mobile performance testing uh, i have worked in um uh, you have worked in mobile uh, may i ask in, in in what capacity so uh, what can you just give a little bit of it uh, as a test manager i have worked in but not from the i'm aware of how it happens but not hands on uh, on it okay and what tools are you uh, was your team using a uh, lo uh, loader loader okay. and, so, and some uh, at the times my team had used a new a new load okay okay all right would you be aware as to was load runner used in 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 collaboration with some other tool as well or was it just purely load load runner no uh, independently it was used okay. for mobile uh, mobile uh, web we used the load runner for native uh, we had used the uh, new load new load okay okay all right okay uh, so um, thanks thanks for that amanshu uh, i take it that anyone else uh, chandan you just joined Chandan, can we have uh, your introduction, please? Hi. So I have uh, overall nine plus years of experience in performance testing and engineering. Mm -hmm. And uh, mobile performance testing something uh, very new space for me. So I just want to know, like, you know, how what do we do, and uh, uh, like, what are the challenges we face? Right. Yeah. Right. So, that, thanks. Thanks for that, Chandan. Uh, Chandan, you you based out of India or out of US? I'm in India. Okay. Okay. Well, the reason to ask this is primarily to make sure that the time is suitable for the folks who are based out there in US at the same time in India. Uh, so we are just going to be having a, a one and a half hour session every weekend, which is Saturday and Sunday. Uh, that is something that we can, you know, kind of uh, going forward, we can discuss. Do we want to have it over two days or do we want to have it over one day itself? Uh, those are the areas which can which, which you can cover up or discuss later on. Okay. Uh, coming to the uh, second part, Chandan, thanks for leading me to it. Uh, as to what your expectations uh, would be out of the course, right? So, Chandan, you mentioned that you want to uh, understand mobile performance testing because it is new. Uh, that's number one. Uh, anyone else? Uh, what is your expectation out of this course? We want to understand what what brings you to this uh, meeting, and so that we can make sure that you know your your queries are answered, your areas of expectations are delivered. Uh, we can have a quick round again. Yes, yeah, so as as I mentioned, like you know, I have almost uh, ten years of experience. Okay, right. so I'm not I'm not uh, looking only for basic. I'm looking for basic to advanced. Right. Okay. okay. And uh, and uh, just to have like you know after this uh, training, so I can be able to handle any kind of application like uh, based on mobile. Okay. All right. Yeah. Any other expectation, guys? Yeah, I mean, Chandan has uh, very much covered. I mean, we are looking at some advanced knowledge. A basic thing uh, using the Fiddler, we can record uh, that we know. And there are some mobile applications like a deep packet profiler or something that also we can use. Mm -hmm. So those things we, we are already aware of. Uh, maybe we need, we are expecting some advanced knowledge. I mean, for uh, handling any complex uh, projects and mobile performance testing very nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Bala. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? Any other expectation? Okay. All right. Uh, well, thanks for that. Uh, uh, being being vocal about the expectations part of it, so that we can, you know, we, we know as to what we are uh, wanting to deliver to the team as well. Uh, what we will be doing is we will be covering it right from basic to an advanced level. When we're talking about basic, uh, how many of us are, are actually aware about what an Android architecture is actually? What is an Android architecture? Are we also aware of it? Are we aware of the components? Are we aware as to what actually goes under the skin? Okay, great. So while we are looking at 
uh, these uh, sessions, we will also be making sure that we raise questions which will also be required for an interview for perspective per se, or for that matter, even to get a tenure and above. So for example, right, if you're tenure and above, uh, no one is going to ask you as to, hey, can you explain this particular API while you go ahead and script this? That's not the level of question that a tenure person is, is supposed to be answering. However, we will still have you prepared on that note as well. But what you're primarily expected out of 10 years and 12 years plus is that, okay, can you understand the architecture? Okay, if there is any bottleneck, where can you optimize it? Okay, if there are any challenges, how can you overcome them, right? And what all uh, tools are you able to use in order to completely cover the scope of mobile performance testing when it comes to web-based applications, when it comes to native-based applications as well, okay? So that is what we're going to cover uh, throughout our uh, series of sessions. Uh, does it sound good? I just have one more question. Yeah. So yes. you are going to cover only Android or iOS as well? Uh, it will be primarily Android. Uh, however, okay. if you to cover iOS as well, we can look at options for that. Yeah, because uh, like if we can cover both, then it would be great. Okay, okay. So it, it will be practical sessions only, right? I mean, uh, you'll be obviously yeah. it should be a practical session. So, right? so this yes, thanks thanks for that, Bada. So this particular weekend, wherein uh, today uh, would be a demo, and tomorrow is where we would actually you know kind of commence the uh, actual class for itself. Uh, we will be covering the theory part of it. Starting next weekend, we commence with the actual practical sessions as well. Not that we will not have any practical sessions tomorrow and today as well. We will have a basic, you know, kind of a trailer, a teaser. That's what a demo okay. session is supposed to be for, right? So okay. we will have okay. what's to what's to what what's to head your way. Uh, that's definitely what we will showcase today. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. Anyone else, guys? And uh, I joined a little late. So did you also also like uh, go through the content of the course? Not yet, sir. We will just okay. go through that. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Okay, guys. All right, so are we good so far? Uh, as far as the expectations are concerned, we will start from the basic, head towards the advanced, ensure that all your uh, areas are covered. Uh, now, here's the thing, right? This is going to be an interactive session. Uh, not that I would know all the things. At the same time, we would expect you all to also answer. Yeah. Uh, we will park the questions that we are able to answer immediately and thereafter. Uh, let's say if there are any questions which are pending out there, we will cover them either towards the end of the session or we'll cover them towards the beginning of the second session. Okay. Does it make sense? Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Okay. With that, we can begin. So I'm not going to open the notepad now just for queries. We'll take them later. Uh, please park your questions. We can have those uh, gathered together. All right, um, so guys, here is what the content looks like. Mobile performance, why measure? Uh, yeah, one thing is there uh, for sure. If we have taken care of our web-based applications, thick clients, uh, you know, different protocols like let's say Cognos-based protocols or for that matter, uh, SAP-based protocols, uh, uh, th there, is a there is an area as to why or an intent as to why do we do that. However, when it comes to mobile performance, the reasons tend to differ, okay, uh, which is what we will be looking at. Uh, that's that's one thing. We'll be looking at critical factors. We'll be looking at the overall mobile performance architecture. Uh, how many of us are actually uh, familiar with the concept of MCA, mobile computing architecture? Excellent. Okay, great answer, because that will help us to uh, dive through it as well. Okay, uh, scope and impact, uh, nothing much to cover in that, because we all know, so I won't really take you through a lot of uh you know theory uh, approach of mobile performance testing yes that is something i would want to uh, kind of uh, deep dive uh, through uh, recording methods now uh, we will talk about recording methods when we when we uh, come towards it uh, we will talk about uh, recording methods via a basic uh, as someone shared uh, we can maybe use a fiddler and you know capture the uh, uh, session out of it uh, and have that uh, imported within the roadrunner that's one of the approach and we will look at the other approaches also that we are uh, wanting to, uh, you know, kind of incorporate within our sessions. Uh, that's one thing. Tomorrow we will have a introduction to the working session and the prerequisites as to going forward for the next week. 
what we would want you all to be prepared with when it comes to actually installation of softwares on your machines as well okay uh, that will give you a good time to uh, one week will be a good time i believe to have yourself ready uh, because a couple of softwares which we require are, uh, are are maybe procured on a trial basis and that is something that you would want to uh, you know kind of download for yourself or if need be then i can make it available maybe i can upload it on a google drive and uh, you know just share the link and you all can just download it there uh, there on okay uh, true client ajax protocol that will be question three and four uh, how many of us have actually used the true client ajax protocol for I have used. Okay, Chandan, Himanshu, and Tejaswini. All right, anyone else? So you all have used it for mobile, I take it, right? No, we have used for like a web application. Ah, okay. Uh, well, I'm referring from more. So everything and anything that we talk, we talk in the language of mobile. Uh, I've used said. it for mobile. Okay, great, Himanshu. Okay, anyone else? Tejaswini, how about you? Uh, no, I've used it for web application. Okay, excellent. So, uh, uh, yeah, fine. Then, then we can take it up, uh, you know, uh, on, on, a, on a deeper level on that one. Uh, we will look at uh, user agent string settings and uh, stuff like that. Uh, user agent, best, uh, how many of us are actually aware of the concept of user agent string? I'm aware. Okay. Uh, I take it others are not. So uh, it's, it's as simple as that, right? Uh, let's say, for example, you are uh, you, you, you're visiting a country. OK, how would you actually go ahead and speak with that uh, speak in that country is that basic country's native language. Uh, user agent string is nothing but a particular string which gets generated based on what environment you're going to be part of, what environment is your application belonging to and what uh, uh, OS OS is uh, kind of being involved. Okay, as a part of the uh, application uh, environment setup. Okay, uh, moving on, uh, True Client Ajax native, native protocol. Uh, now, this native protocol is slightly interesting because it doesn't really work by itself. It does require uh, a, a, a explicit uh, entity uh, that would be like mobile center. Uh, anyone familiar with mobile center over here? Okay, great. So mobile center is uh, uh, has actually, I would say, two components. One is the mobile center server and one is the mobile center connector. Uh, mobile center server is primarily like you having a uh, server which will cater to all your requests. Okay, it will act like a middleware wherein every request that you that you fire will actually be taken care of by the server. Okay. Uh, and thereafter, it helps you emulate. Uh, it is not an emulator, but I'm using mind me. I'm using the word emulate a real time view of your mobile. OK, so we are not talking about just an emulator. Uh, OK, sorry, uh, I forgot to ask uh, in session three and four. We are also looking at the word called emulator. Uh, how many of us have actually used an emulator with load runner? In conjunction with load runner. I'm not talking about true client. I'm talking about an explicit emulator with a with with load runner. OK, excellent. So we'll, we'll be using that as well. So that would kind of be an advanced level of uh, uh, maybe recording a, a, a script from an emulator, uh, which is nothing but primarily used for native based applications. Am I making sense, guys, or am I too fast? Am I too slow? Please let me know. It's OK. OK. How about others? Yeah, it's, yeah good. it's okay. Okay, so please, please stop me. Please ask me to slow down. Whenever my pace is too high, I will, I will, uh, I would be happy to uh, take it low. Yeah. Um, so emulator that we are talking about will specifically be used uh, from a native app perspective, where you will actually be able to create a uh, HTTP HTML level script for a app that is installed on your mobile okay uh, that is what an emulator will help us get done okay that's one secondly coming back to mobile center mobile center will help us actually derive uh, the value out of your current mobile app, current mobile device itself okay so emulator is more of an emulator 
mobile center will be more specific to your mobile and the apps installed on your mobile okay so uh, i think uh, that is that is that is that is the area which is an uncharted area that not too many navigate into and uh, we will be covering that as a part of our session three and four at session five and six all right and then uh, eventually uh, we will be running a load test we'll be analyzing the performance tests uh, results after that and uh, take you through a couple of metrics that are essential for mobile performance okay so uh, that's that's a quick uh, uh, nutshell view as to what's headed to your way uh, and uh, anything else that you think is missing in this agenda please tell me yeah i have a couple of queries on this yes let me note down hold on okay uh, yeah sure yes yeah so uh, first of all uh, like it should not be only load runner okay because as we are heading towards you know all our uh, open source mm -hmm. so it should cover open source tools, uh, tools as well you have any suggestions Jmeter. yeah like uh, j j meter or uh, like gutling or any any open source uh, tool i'm talking about mm -hmm okay so and second thing is uh, you didn't you didn't cover anything on monitoring side yeah like how, uh, how can we monitor during the load test mm -hmm. so uh guys here's the thing right mobile center as i mentioned uh has something called as app pulse as well uh, which we will be dive into also so this mobile center is a freeware or it is a, a licensed one it's a licensed version yeah so is there anything you are going to cover open source okay we will explore that as well freeware on the monitoring aspect we can we can get that uh yeah okay and, uh, you are and you are going to cover a native application right like directly mobile app performance testing yes we will be covering yeah. native applications because it, if it is only browser based mobile application like i don't think it is it is anything like different than uh, web so we are yeah. more concerned about the complex mobile native applications yeah correct so uh, i'm i'm literally talking about applications like icic direct uh, uh, you know example uh, which is normally installed on your mobile and stuff so uh, we are referring to native applications like that so we will be having a mix of it for sure uh, there will be the web-based uh, testing also that we'll be doing and also the native apps that we'll be doing yeah okay and one more thing i just have a, a query so uh, let's say like uh, we want to test it on our uh, uh, like laptops okay mm -hmm. So uh, if I'm not wrong, if I'm going for a load runner community edition, we can have only 50 web HTTP HTML protocol free. That's right. So yes. how can we test it uh, or through like, uh, you know, other, other protocols, how, how can we do the load test? So other protocols are still available to you in the community edition. That's not a problem. Okay. But we uh, cannot when... run it, right? Yes. No, no, no. You can, you can run it. Why, why can't you run it? So you can definitely like have, I, yeah uh, we can run it for uh, make limitation of 50 users that should be sufficient yeah. for from the learning perspective uh, point of view yes yes but 50 users uh, like true client as well we can run yes okay yeah so chandan here's the thing right we will help you get through as far as till the analysis part is concerned so you can leave that uh, responsibility to us we will make sure that you know we run we get through the scripting uh load tests uh, scenario creation load test execution and towards the analysis as well okay so that is something that we'll take care of just to answer the question okay, yeah. okay. thank okay. you all right anyone else guys any other questions that you want any other item that you want to see in the agenda or maybe are missing in the agenda Okay, I will take that as a no. Okay, um, so other tools, yes, open source, we can definitely look at it, uh, Chandan. 
and uh, monitoring perspective we will look at apples we will also look at some other uh, freeware options that we will be having for uh, monitoring the uh, performance of the mobile apps right we can do that okay um uh, i see kadi just joined yes yes kadi can you just give a quick introduction of yourself please hey sorry guys you have to bear for it today uh, this this weekend will only be a slight uh, uh, sluggish if you may feel uh, but obviously we will be picking up pace uh, starting tomorrow and obviously from the upcoming weekends okay yeah kadi yeah, yeah myself kasi and uh, I'm having 12 plus years of ex industry experience in uh, total manual and uh, performance side, and uh, okay. especially performance side, I have having uh, uh, five plus years of experience in a uh, load runner, J meter uh, uh, tools uh, experience and I'm having. And recently, we started using App Dynamics uh, monitoring tool and all. So, intentionally, I want to learn this uh, mobile performance testing, how it works and all. I, going forward uh, uh maybe most of the companies will come to the apps and all for the mobile testing and all so i just want to show my interest to learn this and all so that's why i'm planning to join this class okay great it's a good choice kasi thank you uh kasi we just quickly uh dive to the agenda i will share the slide uh, at the end of the meeting with everyone so that you can have uh, the agenda for yourself and uh, maybe uh, kasi can you please go on mute yeah sure uh um, yep. okay um so um yeah so i will be sharing this slide uh, with everyone uh, if you all still have any items to be added to you can definitely you know kind of get back to me uh on the next session all right uh we will now commence with uh our actual session for today so good with agenda okay uh, how many of us actually so i'm not going to go through the deck and bore you all for it uh, i'm going to simply be asking questions and keeping it interactive uh, how many of us actually think that a mobile performance testing concept is different than in in comparison to uh, a uh, a normal web based concept in what ways is it different uh, yes it's different uh, because mobile puts a lot of uh, resource uh, on the servers mm -hmm. so we need to test it from dis uh, different dimensions uh, and analyze it from different perspective uh, what resources are you referring to uh, uh if in terms of uh, resources uh, uh, used on the load generators perspective server the memory and the disk uh, cpu on the server's perspective uh, mm -hmm. normal web user might uh, say put a lesser use, lesser uh, load on the servers but when it goes from mobile it's more resource uh, intensive precisely okay great all right uh, anyone else what comes Okay, so uh, have you seen uh, when it comes to your actual uh, load test also, uh, there is a expected behavior. You remember when we used to actually learn our performance testing or load testing, we used to see that there is a curve or maybe there is a particular expected, you know, a predictable uh, behavior that we normally see uh, in, in, in an ideal load test, in, in a web-based test, basically, right? Uh, However, when it comes to mobile performance testing, what we look at is a totally unpredictable arena. Uh, Hari, are you asking for presenting? Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so, guys, I would appreciate when I'm talking, you could be on mute. If you have a question, then you can definitely unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh, so, having said that, uh, yes, the mobile performance testing, what we are looking at is a complete different arena in terms of availability that's number one when i'm talking about availability i'm talking about your uh, uh, architecture availability okay uh, it is completely different the mobile performance testing will account for uh, 
availability of your existing architecture. With web-based, at times, we tend to give it a little leverage with regards to the number of hours of, of being available. Uh, specifically, because if it might be a geographically distributed application, still, it will be used for maybe 18 to 20 hours. It will not be 24-7 available. But with mobile, it has to be 24-7 available because a user can even get up from his bed and you know, access the app. So it might make a request to your, uh, to your architecture. So that, that's the primary uh, look at it. Secondly, uh, when it comes to mobile, there is a major factor called the network, which differs from our general uh, load runner or a basic web-based uh, load, web load testing, right? Uh, normally, how many of us have actually experimented with touching the network bandwidth while a uh, configuration in load runner? Or do we just keep it like use maximum bandwidth? How many of us have actually tried that? Uh, yes, uh, I have done it. Uh, when we do mobile performance testing, we have to configure it uh, different, different like uh, uh, bandwidths so like 4G, LTE, 3G. Right. Right. Okay. All right. So uh, that that's some, that's something, uh, Himanshu, you've done it for the true client protocol itself, or even for the web-based thing. Uh, for both. For both. Excellent. Okay. Yes. So configuring your network uh, profile is something that is that is crucial when it comes to a mobile performance test. Uh, that will really help you uh, simulate a real-time situation. And uh, while that is the case, we will also look at what factors are crucial when it comes to fluctuating networks. Okay. What factors are crucial that one would want to pay attention to when it, when it comes to fluctuating networks? Uh, that, that's the second thing. Okay. Uh, now we look at so what you see on screen is uh, mobile performance affects brand value the reason why it becomes crucial is because yes it does affect your brand value you nowadays you have a couple of feedbacks like these which are on screen and your brand has gone for a cross okay uh, so so that that's something you would definitely not want to have it on google play store right so when you download or, or when you come when you come across a new application what are the what are the couple of areas that you see on google play store or for that matter uh, maybe a mac what what factors do you see before installing an application? Size of the file. Size of Sorry? the file. Size of the Size. file. Okay, that is one factor that you see. Excellent. Okay. Ratings. Ratings, precisely. Okay. And what else? Uh, size. Size, yes, size mentioned. Anything else? Do you all see the number of... How many yes. people are downloaded the application? Ah, exactly, exactly. How many people have downloaded the application? Because that kind of helps you get a reality check, right? So uh, we look at how many people have downloaded the application. So guys, basically, Mobile performance does affect the brand value to a lot of extent, and these factors are visible even to a first-time visitor at at any point in time, right? So you definitely don't want to uh, kind of mess up with that aspect. Uh, may I ask you to go on mute? Uh, okay, or I can mute. That's fine. Okay. Um, key factors affecting uh, mobile performance. We're talking about three crucial factors. Number one, the rendering. Number two, the network. Number three, backend. Now, if you ask me which of these are important, which of these three is the most important, I would say all of them because primarily uh, your backend and network can play a tough time when it comes to mobile. Uh, yeah, when, when it comes to mobile uh, performance testing. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, having said that, uh, we will be simulating all of that. So be rest assured, we will be covering this for sure. Okay. Uh, we will also be, I'm not sure if you have heard of synthetic level monitoring. How many of us have actually heard of that? I'm going to unmute you for that. Yes, I have heard about it. Okay. Uh, Himanshu, have you done the synthetic monitoring? Uh, not really, just uh, concept wise. Okay. Uh, can you explain us to just what is your understanding on it? Uh, we uh, uh, monitor uh, 
the application for uh, various layers of information performance in, uh, performance uh, it's not uh, that we use uh, only uh, the load runner or any tool without any other tools uh, through other scripting uh, we can also do it mm -hmm. all right okay uh, thanks for that so here's the thing right uh, when it comes to synthetic okay how many of us have actually attempted with silk performer has anyone is anyone a silk performer person over here okay now synthetic monitoring uh, is specifically an ability for you to deep dive into a lot of areas or i would say layers of your application uh, it can it can be primarily on the server side and also on the client side where you can say that okay these are my resources for a certain for, for a certain page which is being displayed at the moment okay now what you can also do is you can have your transactions you can literally have your transactions being mapped to the resource that is actually being described so for example we have transaction one two ls start transaction one start transaction two and n one and n two within that start and end if you have certain steps you can literally go about mapping you can literally go about mapping that transaction yeah you can literally go about mapping that transaction with the particular steps uh with uh of of, of uh, sorry what am i saying you can actually go about mapping your transaction with the particular resource that is respective to that step am i making sense let me repeat that you can actually map your transaction with respect to the resource for that particular step yes sir uh, like uh, if there are say net test uh, uh, users uh, performing how much uh, cpu memory is being consumed by each resources and for each transactions this is what uh, we have uh, done it mm -hmm. so yeah that is a part of it uh, himanshu thanks for adding up to that uh, however we are looking more on uh, bottleneck identification when it comes to synthetic monitoring okay uh, we are able to identify at what point are we looking for an uh, for an issue uh, which resource is consuming the maximum amount of time okay synthetic monitoring really helps us de uh, derive that achieve that okay um that is there pardon me so back end and all we'll definitely get into it today uh, we'll give you a quick uh, understanding of it now do you see this is my screen visible guys yeah okay uh the fluctuation that comes when it uh, when it when it comes to mobile performance testing the fluctuation is a lot is a lot specifically due to the network bandwidth and the backend that can at times be responsible as well okay uh, so these are the factors that that, that uh, actually kind of hold uh, crucial uh, weightage when it comes to executing your mobile load test okay i'm not going to uh, dwell on it too much because we need to get into the content also this is the okay all right so guys this is the architecture that we would be deep diving tomorrow okay uh, we will take you through a step by step component of the architecture okay um, and while that is the case we will be ensuring to also address bottleneck areas with regards to each and every component okay so let me give you a quick trailer as to what it would be like uh, so for example uh, maybe we're talking about this lines also right we're talking about these lines there is a reason for these lines app server and db server uh, at times the number of connections from the web server to the app server and the number of connections from the app server to the db server can be different okay uh, what it what, uh, so what does it take to have an ideal number of connections that is something that we're going to be talking about we're also going to be talking about maybe like a cdn right content delivery networks hey how many of us are actually familiar with this concept of cdn Yeah, I'm Alvaro. Okay, thanks, Chandan. Anyone else? Okay, uh, Chandan, can you just uh, take a minute and uh, let us know as to what? Yeah, so this is basically like, uh, let's say my servers are placed in US and I'm accessing the application from India. 
then there will be some network latency so in in that case if there will be like you know servers hosted in a nearby location or suppose let's say in mumbai so i can access the application faster compared to if it is in us so that is something uh, called content delivery network correct thanks thanks for that chandan so um, yeah that that is actually content delivery network what it primarily holds importance for is the latency uh, that a person uh, that, that a person can experience at his or her end uh, with the fact how soon the packets are being transmitted so uh, not necessary every time you know you you have you need to have your uh, content delivery network making a request to the isp and thereafter it goes to the load balancer and all maybe the content delivery network is equipped with a high level of memory cache as well which is able to store all the most very uh, you know frequently made requests which is what it will be able to immediately cater to you so that reduces your overall response time significantly okay uh, that's what the idea of a content delivery network is and with aws in picture uh, there is something called as uh, elastic cache yeah if i'm not wrong have you heard the concept of elastic cache Guys, am I audible to everyone? Just wanted to understand because I am seeing certain challenges being faced by uh, certain people. Uh, yeah, I can hear. You I can hear. Able to hear your voice. Okay. Okay. Are we good so far with the content? Oh. Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, so, you yeah, haven't heard the concept of elastic cache. Okay. No. It's an AWS. Yeah, so, so it's an AWS concept wherein what we are looking at is user is given the ability to have his or her own memory cache con, uh, memory cache memory cache capacity increased or decreased. Uh, primarily, this is done because if you want to optimize your network, see over here you can definitely do. This is like your setup, okay? Uh, In-house setup. This this is something more of a specific to a company, okay? However, when you come beyond this uh area this is where the actual load is faced in the first place okay the employee whoever or the customer whoever is requesting for any kind of a data will actually hit the cloud service or will or will hit the cdn in the first place okay if your cdn is well equipped if your cdn is well equipped to serve those requests then it really kind of reduces the load what comes to your actual architecture okay not necessary every time the cdm will be hit with a request it will be able to uh, cater to one it has to make requests okay thereafter there is something called as a soft parsing and a hard parsing as well uh, when it comes to web server app server and db server uh, are we familiar with the concept of soft parsing and hard parsing okay how many of us have actually seen uh, heard about an awr uh, report yeah i'm aware of okay so uh, Chandan, are you aware of hard passing and soft passing within it yes excellent okay so uh guys hard passing is something that uh, okay i'm spilling out the beans actually but so be it because it needs to be interesting at the same time uh hard passing is something that a request is not is not served in the initial stages wherein it has to go towards the db server and fetch the request fetch the response for it right the db server has to respond for that request uh soft passing is something maybe the web server or the app server in the first place in fact not even the app server. i would say that the web server is having that ability to respond back with the existing responses which has been made frequently over the period of time okay so for that you don't need to make an actual hit to the db which is called as soft parsing okay we will actually look at even breaking down of a request when it comes to uh the query execution plan okay uh what, what happens to uh what happens to a query execution plan as to how a db server interprets a request that is something also we will take a look at tomorrow okay so uh guys that's the uh uh content which is which is crucial i believe to understand at any lotus end to end you got to first understand these are the components and what all areas can i go ahead and apply my optimization okay uh, you can definitely have your outputs uh, at the end of a web test and you can just supply them as a performance test results uh it would hold a lot of value if you can also mention recommendations that okay you know what can we place this particular css over this particular location which will help us uh you know kind of load the application more in a responsive based design 
have you all worked on a responsive based design application? That's a quite a common thing actually these days. So have all of us have had a chance to work on a responsive design based application? Okay, I'm not able to hear anyone. Uh, like, can you elaborate a bit on that? Sure. Like exactly. Uh, oh, what? Okay. For example, I have a site called, uh, let's say, uh, mysite.com. Now you are requesting, you're, you're trying to access that particular page from your mobile. One person is accessing that page from an iPad, or the other would be from a web-based uh, laptop or uh, maybe any other device, right? So based on, or, or, or an iOS device as well. So based on what the uh, device is, we are, the, the, the application will be co uh, content, uh, the, the, okay, let me put it this way, right? The application will be rendered accordingly, okay, based on what the device is. That is what you would call as a responsive design application, response-based design application. Okay. Okay. Not, not originally when these applications are built, they are not really responsive-based design. However, third generation and fourth generation now, yes, we are having that uh, mechanism inbuilt by default. But uh, earlier existing applications, if you kind of reduce the design, right? For example, let me just uh, exit the presentation. Hold on. <coughs> Sorry. So let's take a uh, flip card, right? Um, okay, you see the way it is being displayed at the moment. Yeah. And uh, let me show you what happens when we change it. You see what happened, guys? Hello? Yes. 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 We can observe what happened. What was the change? Or let, let, let me go slow. Let me go slow. It is it is rendering gradually as you scroll or as you maximize or minimize. Correct. Do you see this control wasn't there earlier in the first place? It was not there at all. Okay. Yeah. But now all of that content has actually come across in this format now that is what i would call as a good response based design okay but this is not true with all applications okay this is not true with all pages this is not true with all applications either okay that's a response based design okay um, okay yeah uh, so what what we'll be looking at is how a response based design is catered to which is where we will also be understanding the concept of user agent strip, okay, which holds importance for a response based design application. Yeah, uh, we will be looking at the mobile components also. I think that is something we will start today itself because I want to keep it more interesting. Uh, uh, mobile components will understand the Android architecture. Okay, we will understand the Android architecture. So what you are seeing currently is let me put it this way, right? The title of this slide should have actually been mobile computing architecture. Okay mobile performance computing or mobile computing architecture is what I would hold this uh, slides title. There is another slide which I will take you all through that will be called as the mobile, uh, sorry, Android architecture. Okay, and that will kind of help you understand uh, when you it will make more sense when you even touch your mobile the next time. Okay. Guys, is it holding value? Please tell me if it is not, then we'll jump into yes. more value. Yes. Okay. Uh, these are crucial items guys, especially when it comes to you might not you might find that this is theory as of now But for analysis perspective these items do hold importance for interview perspective These items do hold importance if anyone asks you where okay fair enough You had a mobile performance architecture and what have you done to optimize it? Then maybe you don't want to go all bonkers. You want to make sure that you have tangible answers which do make sense Okay, because theory answers definitely would kind of uh, be very uh, evident all right, uh, we will move on to the next one. Impact of network. Yeah, as I said earlier, network holds a lot of importance when it comes to mobile performance testing. Uh, 
you see the stability you see the stability that it is performing i'm not asking just for the lower uh, being lower in its uh, graph but i'm talking about there is a rhythm to it okay there is a rhythm to it do you see any kind of a rhythm over here not at all okay with with a mobile uh, when it comes to mobile network conditions there is no rhythm thanks to vodafone idea and uh, airtel yeah all right uh, that is what your mobile technology now uh, please don't misunderstand this with uh, architecture or don't misunderstand this with android architecture i'm talking about your mobile technology okay we are talking about the underlying components as to when you are using your uh, chrome on your mobile app or for that matter on your uh, your, your your iphone how does it actually just function i'm talking about the user interface components okay uh, this is obviously a browser your minimal browser uh, which comes with your uh, mobile os itself that is what you look at okay uh, html4 uh, let's say is the is the is the underlying technology for it uh, when it comes to iphone and ipad you are looking at an html5 and responsive design okay uh, have you faced the challenge that on your mobile not all web applications will render completely or appropriately. Has have you seen that happening sometimes? Yes. Trying yeah. to open up, and maybe you have to auto rotate and you know kind of uh, uh, drag and uh, drag and shift to the left or to the right. That's when it comes to uh, viewing the content on your actual uh, mobile devices. Okay, uh, but you look at this when it comes to iPhone. By default, by default, there is a responsive design ability because they are actually going and using HTML5, okay? That is uh, that is the beauty of what HTML5 brings to your uh, device. Okay, uh, we, are, we are looking about a hybrid app. Uh, okay, are we aware of the concept of hybrid app? I think while talking, we were talking about web-based and native. Hybrid app, are we aware of it? I take that as a no. Okay, uh, please, if you if you're aware of it, please share. Okay, that will that will really help me to learn as well if I'm if I don't know things. Yeah, are, are we aware of hybrid app? Okay. Yeah, someone was answering. Hmm. Okay. Uh, just some disturbance. Fine. So hybrid app. Let's say for example you have ICICI Direct, right? Uh, it is a native thick client on your mobile for sure. Okay. Um, again, I say direct being my uh, favorite example because that kind of uh, is a hybrid app in the first place. Uh, it it integrates into a thick client at the same time it integrates into a web based uh, uh, client as well whenever there is a requirement for one. Okay. How? For example, um, let me check. I can show you something. Yes, please stop me if there is any uh, any area that you want to understand. Okay. So uh, yeah, please don't pay attention to the screen. It's just ads that keep coming. It's a default thing. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so what I've started currently is nothing but an emulator. Okay. And uh, this emulator comes with a couple of free games. Uh, nevertheless, uh, this emulator will help us uh, throughout the uh, series of sessions to understand what kind of app, what architecture, uh, what are we talking about when it comes to rendering and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, Hybrid app is an app which will have certain pieces of its application on a web-based approach and certain pieces of its application on the actual installed app. Okay, so that is what uh, the uh, hybrid app is all about. Uh, native app, obviously, as by the name suggests, it's a thick client, obviously, like a installed software on your uh, on your machine, on your on your device, I would say. Uh, Safari browser again, that makes it a web-based app. Uh, then we have web services uh, which uh, directly uh, integrate with the native app and uh, you know it, 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 it kind of talks back to the architecture and come and gets you the details uh, gets you the response uh, that's the 
uh, responses or, or the responsibility of a web-based service. Okay, uh, what approaches we are going to talk about? We are going to talk about uh, True Client Ajax mobile. Uh, uh, we are all, we are going to attempt with agent user agent spoofing. We are going to look at your HTTP HTML protocol. Uh, basically, uh, some someone mentioned about Fiddler. That not being the only part, we will also be looking at native app. As I think Chandan or I'm not sure Manchu asked for it. Uh, we'll be looking at a native app being recorded from a uh, uh, HTTP ML uh, protocol uh, perspective. Okay, we'll be doing that. Uh, Android uh, again, as I said, we will be trying to use a record emulator. So this and this actually integrates with each other. Okay, uh, that is something that we will be uh, looking at. Okay, now approaches that we are talking about. Excuse me. Yeah, approach, guys. Uh, one more thing. Uh, every session is going to be a one and a half hour session. If you all need a break in between, we can have a five minute break, maybe like a you know a tea break or a, or a loo break that you would want to have, uh, and we can resume that way. Uh, if at all we are good, we can continue with the space. Can we have a quick shout out? I am good. Okay. How about others? We are good. Yeah. yeah fine. Yeah. Good. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. So. Uh, what we will be doing is, uh, as uh, someone said about Fiddler, uh, that will help us record a capture file or a session capture file. Uh, and uh, one can go ahead and import that within a uh, HTTP ML uh, level script. And uh, you'll be able to see load generator, uh, sorry, uh, your view gen automatically converting it to a uh, LR script. Okay, uh, that is there. Uh, however, there are other options like a record emulator, which I would want to bring your attention towards. It needs an APK file. Now your APK file is nothing but a file which which is an installation file for a particular application on your mobile. Okay. Uh, by default, we are used to hear the word called .exe. Okay. Uh, when it comes to maybe installation files or standalone files uh, for a general application that needs to be or software that needs to be installed on your uh, laptop or device or desktop. Uh, when it comes to mobile, uh, the language is APK. Okay. Uh, which is where uh, this file is primarily responsible to uh, to represent your application. Okay, let me put it that way. Now, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be having your device emulator. Okay, we are going to be having your device emulator uh, integrate with the APK. Okay, and um, uh, that 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 will something that that is something that we would want to to pay attention to uh, because uh, that would be an advanced kind of a thing. Uh, we would also we would recommend we will give you already on the WhatsApp group that we are already there. Uh, if anyone is not there, you can just ping me ping later on in chat in, in, the, in the chat group. Uh, we will tell you what emulator you need to go about installing. Uh, uh, again, a quick point: these emulators will be freewares. They will not be licensed stuff. Okay. Also, they will be freewares, and you can definitely go playing around with them. Okay. So far, good. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, just that you all should uh, know, APK is nothing but your uh, Android package uh, which holds the software together. Okay. Uh, now, so it talks about record emulator and proxy recording. How many of us have actually tried the proxy recording approach with Load Runner for mobile? Excellent. We'll take that up as well. Okay, uh, Ajax True Client. Uh, again, that's a common approach, uh, and we will navigate through it, especially for people who are new to mobile performance testing, and or maybe somewhere in the middle as well. Okay, um, so that's about the approach, guys. We will be talking about uh, your and okay, you know what? One thing is not mentioned over here, and that's the mobile center, which is the crucial aspect also. Okay, the mobile center is actually you uh, connecting your mobile to your laptop and uh, recording a script on your mobile as well. Okay, that, that is something we'll be doing that. Um, eventually, all of that. So, what I want you to keep in mind is I want you to keep in mind this screen. I want you to keep in mind this screen. Maybe not if possible so early. That's okay. Leave this. You don't need to pay attention to too much of it. We will cover this in detail later on. Uh, 
but as of now what i want you to just keep in mind take away for today very simple your mobile technology that you are looking at why is it a responsive design what makes it a responsive design and what kind of recording methods are we looking at okay so that would be your crucial takeaway today and uh, uh, maybe you can also prepare your questions uh, for uh, the next weekend session yeah okay uh, with that we come to the end of this slide and uh, enough of just a uh, high level view we will now deep dive into uh, an actual android architecture hello yeah i'm out okay. of it. yeah this is uh, uh, can i ask a question before uh, progressing please yes please is there any much difference um between this um yeah, with regards protocols between um, Ajax True Client and this mobile, is there any vast difference between the respective clients we'll be using, like the one used for Ajax True Clients and the one used for mobile? So, um, uh, I'm sorry, may I get your name, please? This is Sano from US. Okay, hi there. Uh, welcome to the uh, demo session. Okay. So mobile Ajax, okay, here's the thing, right? Uh, True Client Ajax mobile is uh, um, a protocol which one can easily get it done, which is more on a UI level based. Okay, you, the, uh, it, how, how do I put it, right? Let me, let me show the screen, in fact, that will kind of take us through our today's lookup. Okay, uh, this is how a script of True Client ajax mobile web would look like okay does it make sense this is how the script would look like it won't it is more of a ui level part wherein one can just understand even read it and understand as to what it looks like okay now come to the actual native app recording that we have done okay uh baby center and icic direct let's say icic direct being my favorite uh it has the actual script being recorded in the HTTP ML mode. Okay. Now, how have we done that? This uh, part of the reason we have definitely not used Fiddler for this. We've actually gone ahead and used uh, uh, your uh, device emulator, uh, which hosts a native app, and we have recorded the native app literally. Uh, so, Chandan and uh, Himanshu, does that answer your uh, point? If I'm not wrong, I think you had raised this about native apps, right, initially? yeah yeah so that is there uh, uh i'm sorry uh my friend from us uh you just mentioned about uh, uh sano right yeah so sano uh is this your question that you're asking how different is your true client ajax protocol than uh, actual mobile http html level recording is that what you're asking yeah that was my question. I, I thought i thought we, with mobile we're going to use the same um true client protocol um for mobile recording that was my idea but it's uh -huh. not clear. So. yes so well, thanks thanks for asking please feel free to ask any more questions going forward as well uh, mm -hmm. so mobile uh true client mobile yes we are going to be looking at it especially for the sake of people who are completely new to mobile performance testing uh at the same time we are going to get this run over the low test execution and also we are going to be looking at your http html based recording when it comes to a native app okay uh this is what another native app like uh, baby center is especially for the pregnant women is what they use uh, to track the pregnancy. Uh, this is the native app for baby center and this is how it looks like. Okay. Are we comfortable so far guys? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so that's a quick teaser. Okay. Just, just, just that you all should know that's a quick teaser as to what's headed your way. Okay. Uh, Android architecture. Anytime you're familiar with, please, uh, you know, kind of feel free to uh, mention your inputs. I would love to have it interactive. Okay. Uh, now, your uh, this is nothing but your actual Android uh, software stack, how it looks like your basic uh, high-level architecture. Um, now, 
the base of the android architecture is nothing but your kernel okay this uh, this is this is this is the kernel okay now it's built around linux okay the version of linux that we normally look at which we normally have for our uh, maybe we can have it for our mac os or for any other operating system that we would like to have uh, it, it consumes a lot of space however when it comes to linux on a mobile device it is highly optimized for the mobile operating systems okay uh, it works best so that we can have a highly okay just give me a minute i am sorry about that yeah uh, sorry i was getting a call uh, now this linux is how different is it from uh, an actual uh, linux that is on your desktop right uh, it is basically optimized. It's an optimized level of Linux with regards to a highly constrained CPU and memory capacity. Okay, let me repeat it again. This is a highly optimized, and guys, you can take notes if you need be, and I'll be supplying the deck as well later on. Uh, however, taking a personal notes will, all be, will always be recommended. Uh, that will help you have a clear understanding. Uh, this Linux will have uh, is, is different in terms of uh, the fact that it is optimized with a perspective of highly constrained cpu and a short memory capacity okay remember you definitely don't want your one single app eating up all the memory uh, that can be reserved for your actual operating system or for that matter be reserved for other apps which consumes right uh, uh, that, that that's something you would definitely not want so i'm going to do it this way right i'm going to mention it this way while we Talk about a particular uh, section of an architecture. I'm also going to be referring to the bottlenecks that are associated with it. Guys, I'm sorry. Just give me one minute. I'll to step out for this one. Just give me one minute, please. Hello. Ha, boliye jaldi. Ah, wrong number. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so what I'm, what we're going to do is we talk we're going to talk about a particular uh, component of the Android architecture, and we are going to be talking about the associated bottlenecks with it. That way, uh, we don't have too many questions left at the end of the day for you know uh, when it comes to interview level uh, question, uh, scenarios as well. Okay. Uh, now uh, Linux kernel, right? What we are talking about is uh, this is the piece which will actually interact with your uh overall mobile this will be the heart of the mobile and this linux is highly optimized with an intent of uh constrained cpu and memory capacity on top of that is your android runtime okay your android runtime is nothing but it enables the behavior of linux let me put it this way it's like the hand and mouth hand mouth and legs for your uh, uh, your internal body of linux okay um associated with it are certain libraries which are also crucial when it comes to uh, how many of, heard, of us have actually heard the concept of dalvik uh, dalvik virtual machine okay uh, take that as a no uh, jvm familiar right yeah yeah excellent so Dalvik, uh, Dalvik VM or Dalvik virtual machine is nothing but your JVM for your Android, okay, or, or basic uh, Android architecture. All right, now uh, moving on, uh, the application framework, it sits on top of the Android runtime and the associated libraries. And finally, obviously, this is the applications part of it, which is which can either be operating system based, like for example, your, your, your default contact applications, okay, contacts, let's say, or phone dialing application, or for that matter, your messaging application. These are your, cust uh, your your operating system based applications, whereas later on the ones that you download from your Play Store, they are nothing but your uh, custom based applications. Okay, let's quickly move on. Android software stack. Okay, uh, guys, uh, today's, uh, since we are kind of, uh, you know, running short on time, we will ensure that we are covering every question with regards to the deck that we've covered so far. At the same time, the rest of the things will be parked for, for our tomorrow session. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Android, uh, your, your Linux kernel, right? Your Linux kernel uh, would actually interact with the drivers. Okay. It's nothing but it's a it's a it's a it's an amalgamation of the operating system which in, which which 
holds your drivers drivers for your camera drivers for your audio of the device drivers for your display wi-fi power management you talk about it and every driver is kind of associated with your linux kernel over here okay i'm not going to spend too much of time on this okay now your android runtime okay uh, oh one more thing i wanted to cover mainly yeah so uh, let's say if uh, how uh, we, we we also understand about how these uh, mobiles keep evolving right uh, vivo started with a basic uh, 10 megapixel or a 20 megapixel not as reached to 64 megapixel if i'm not sure uh, what do they do they actually do nothing but enhance the drivers of I'm sorry, I'm just going to Hello? Oh, Jiru. Okay, what yeah. uh, if you all have a question, uh, please uh, raise it in the chat window. Uh, I'll be more than happy to answer the question. Okay. Uh, now, your uh, Linux, uh, okay, Vivo had a 10 megapixel, 20 megapixel, and now it is, I believe, reached to 64 or, or 48 megapixel uh, camera, right? What do they do? these people they enhance the drivers okay uh with with two uh with two people or with two entities primarily contributing to it one is google itself the google google has to con uh, contribute to your driver secondly the vendor who builds the driver actually they have to go ahead and contribute towards it okay uh so these two uh com entities they kind of help you evolve your mobile so today if you're looking at an evolved mobile this is the component which helps it evolve okay Let's understand that very clearly. Okay, moving on to the other one, Android software stack for which 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 will hold your Android runtime. Okay, what your Android runtime holds is the Dalvik virtual machine, which is nothing but your JVM in 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 a in a simple language, and certain core libraries. Okay, uh, again, when we talk about uh, it, it kind of uh, how how do I put it right? Uh, it's a highly optimized version of your JVM. Okay. Uh, how is the question? <clears throat> so, what is the job of a JVM? And uh, oh, sorry, I'll unmute you. Sorry. <clears throat> JVM JVM is used for uh, running the run runtime code for Java. JVM is used for running the runtime code of for Java. Okay. What is the first output of a JVM? And please shoot. Like, there's nothing has to be right. Nothing has to be right. You can Hello? just be wrong. Can yeah. you repeat Hi, the question? Sure. So, so some um, of my question is, what is the job of a JVM? Actually, JVM um, in, in Java, when we talk about JVM, it's like this is where um, we have our JRE and the, and the JDK. They are there to actually run and execute our byte code. Yeah, we have so many areas, you know, this is the area we actually concentrate, we as performance tester, we are we actually going to pay more attention to the heap, the heap memory is actually located in the JVM, and in there we have so many partitions, you know. Excellent, 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 Sano. thank you, thank you for bringing that up, which is why I'm kind of pausing on that and, you know, uh, asking a question as to what uh, importance does JVM hold. Uh, so, guys, JVM is your performance. Uh, to put it very simple, okay, JVM is your performance in a way. Uh, it contributes heavily to your performance. Uh, please, you can just go on mute, uh, please. Uh, Pasi, I request you to be on mute, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, JVM holds a majority of your performance together. Okay. If you are low on it. Or if there is an app that is eating up your memory, uh, well, you're not good. You're not good. Okay. Uh, now, my second question was, what is the first output of a JVM? Is it bytes code? Sorry? Is it bytes code? Excellent. Uh, thank you, Sano. It's byte yeah. code. Yeah. Now, the byte code, the byte code of a normal JVM is much larger. Okay is much larger which operates on maybe on your desktop or your laptop okay it's much larger as compared to that byte code which a dalvik virtual machine generates okay 
Guys, are we getting it? Are we cool with it? Yes. Okay, so that is the reason why you can actually run the same application that you're running on your desktop and the same application on your uh, mobile device. Okay, uh, have you ever wondered that how come the same application that runs in, let's say 500 MB on my uh, mo on, on my laptop is running in maybe like 50 MB or, 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 or maybe 120 MB on, on my mobile device. Part of the reason is your JVM and the amount, the, the kind of byte code that it generates is quite different from a normal uh, Java compiler byte code. Okay, are we making sense guys? Yes. Perfect, let's move on. Okay. Uh, libraries, crucial. Now, uh, yeah. Kasi, I would request to be on mute. If yeah. Not, uh, Are they no, no, no. I'm going to ask one question. I think yes. uh, in the web and uh, mobile applications, are they preparing any uh, different applications uh, in the production side? Show, suppose if a customer is accessing from the laptop, then they are planning to show. So from which resource uh, end user, how they are accessing from laptop. So better to show this application. If he's accessing from mobile, they are planning to show uh, the mobile application like that they are uh, designing the application like that or how we should it? excellent question kasi uh, which kind of revolves us back to the earlier slide which i shared uh, let me quickly bring that up to refresh your uh, thoughts on this uh how do i do this f5 sorry okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah this one uh, Kasi, this piece was actually shown with regards to an how does the mobile technology actually work? They don't build separate apps for that. Okay, what I'm talking about is when you're when you're watching the content on your you, do you see this block over here? Kasi, are you there? Yeah, yeah, it's visible. Yeah, FT. Yes, yes, yes. So, guys, your HTML5. Okay is having the ability to be responsive design based to be responsive uh, response based design okay uh, that way it will render the content effectively on your safari browser it will render the content effectively on your uh, uh, on safari browser on your iphone let me let me be specific it will also render the content on your internet browser which is on your windows pc okay so you're not looking at different uh, different applications kasi you're looking at one application which is a response based design okay uh, I did share uh, a page, I think earlier, I, did I close it? I didn't close it, yes. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay, this was the part which I just uh, showed through initially. You see the way it is kind of uh, adjusting itself, right? So it will adjust itself based on what or who the user is watching, okay? So this piece, if you see this piece wasn't there, when you're looking at an expanded web base page okay but when you minimize okay. it or when you can content of it it automatically adjusts itself so you're not looking at different uh, development for all of okay that's it okay you think perfect all right uh, coming back to our content and uh, yeah okay uh, so uh, oh, uh so one more question. Uh, you mean to say all the web applications are developed okay, like that only? I mean, web and mobile applications are only um, that is a flip card. Yes. Yes. There is a lot of background noise. Uh, so, mobile applications, I wouldn't say yes to that because Android development and, and you know your iOS development is definitely different, no doubt about it. But what I'm talking about is a web based application uh, which is. Uh, primarily built these days is response based design if it is not response based design it is not a good design and you definitely need to recommend one okay flipkart Bala? careers uh, yeah yeah my question is uh, that flipkart careers you will have a app also to download right i'm sorry so when it is uh, you have shown some uh, flipkart careers right right yes 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 Okay, if it is uh, downloaded from the mobile, uh, I will be able to see like that. Uh, if it is uh, it is accessed on the web, uh, I will be seen in a different format, right? That's what you are saying. Exactly, yes, yes. 
okay i mean uh, my question is uh, when the applications can be developed like this why the people are using specifically android for development hmm okay so uh, very very good one uh, let me to for which i would want to come to this slide again okay uh, guys uh, we are we are moving with times right we are we are moving with evolving times wherein initially no one thought about a app no one thought about an app right everyone thought about a browser every content was there on a browser this app level concept came across when your mobile technology actually came into place in the first in the, in the first place and no none of the people thought that anything like this was possible okay what people thought is your basic custom uh, your, your basic operating system based apps are the only apps that one could possibly have i'm talking about phone and talking about uh, your messages and stuff like that however eventually they they also arrived to a conclusion that not always your web based app will be able to cater to a mobile based device which is where the android package okay which is where the android package came into existence okay apk is what we call okay now apk mein, what they are doing is they are packing the whole content in a highly optimized and reduced manner you see your laptop and devices might have 1 tb and 2 tb core memory but your iphone and ipad won't have that kind of a memory right agreed with to, to cater to such kind of a request you ought to have a adapted kind of app uh, present out there on your device which is why the native app first thought came into play now when it comes to native app what we are looking at is what all forms are we looking at we are looking at a cpu uh, we, we are looking at an app which is highly uh, optimized when it comes to using minimal cpu minimum memory uh, and minimum uh, hardware drivers as well because remember it's a process uh, when when we come to load runner when we are talking about running a particular test we run a user as a thread and we run a user as a process what do you think true client runs uh, a basic user as can you can someone answer that a true client uh, what is a user running as user process process right. why 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 do you think so because because it's consumed a lot of memory uh okay but it is actually uh, yes that is true thank and you the, and the memory yeah. footprint is so huge than the html http html protocol yeah precisely now the idea is guys if you're talking about 300 so here's the ratio right it's 1 is to 10 ratio so if you're talking about 300 http html level users in the same amount of memory you can only use 30 true client users okay that is the significance which is where one thought that okay uh, we can't have the same level uh, same approach running on an iphone and same approach running on a windows pc that is where my transition happens to a uh, apk level package which constructs the whole application into a smaller version of it wherein every user that will run even though if it runs as a process it will not consume that much of cpu and that much of memory Balu, does that answer <coughs> but still this native apps are more effective right than these uh... absolutely 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 because native apps hold the whole application together wherein your windows uh, let's say a browser that you're looking at it might not, so nowadays right we have, we have become smarter we have become smarter by saying that okay it's a single page browser sorry it's a single page application and all the components on the application are loaded later on are we aware of this concept no no okay so let me let me explain this one in a, in a shorter way we are short on time in in uh, okay uh, one page if it gets displayed okay let me go back why am i talking let me do the display Now you tell me, uh, do you think all the data is so all the data related to this application or this web-based thing is is loaded at the same time? What I'm talking about is the content with regards to about the content with regards to life at Flipkart. Okay, these images are these images uh, loaded all of them uh, in in the background when uh, I am uh, uh, looking at this homepage? Do you think so? No, no, no. Okay. Now, the idea behind that is to make sure 
that my web my 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 home page uses the least amount of resources because what i want to work on is the rendering time coming back to performance it's funny how all of this links to performance right so uh, my home page i want to make sure that it renders in the minimal base time so what i'll do is i'll load the bare minimum components like for example this is not honestly a good way to kind of uh, have a web page which is with a video running right at the background because obviously it is consuming a lot of uh, 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 resource uh, memory in the in the in the first load in the first and the second load i would say but once you have loaded this this would stay back this would stay back in your mem cache and you'll be able to see it as fast as possible okay not all the components are loaded at the same time so which is where i would say uh, not a good idea uh, i would still say not a very optimized design because when you come to your uh, mobile applications do you see the amount now here's my question second question do you see the amount of network available or used when you simply click a button of login on icici direct or maybe anywhere else on a particular mobile app do you see the amount of uh, network uh, transition network uh, bandwidth that is consumed let me be very clear yeah have you all seen that i will i will measure that a app let me put sorry guys i'm going to be using hindi as well in between sometime one app how much amount of time or sorry how much amount of network bandwidth does it occupy when one person uh, clicks on a button on an app have you all observed that yeah sometimes okay uh, tejaswini where have you uh, observed that uh, uh, exchange happening the amount of thing uh, happening, the amount of yeah. yeah so i'm not sure whether this is uh, exactly uh, what you're talking about is uh, on the top bar on the mobile when i click on the application it shows me the uh, the kilobytes per second or the network speed so is that the one you're talking about excellent tejaswini yeah that's exactly what i'm referring to okay uh, guys a homework simple play around with your mobile and please enable the network i uh, network uh, bandwidth uh, uh, notification on your mobiles okay uh, it does uh, let me uh, mind it it will uh, consume a lot of uh, battery power for sure uh, at the same time it will show you every uh, click and the amount of that click has and the amount of network bandwidth that the click has consumed okay it will show that that network and an actual web application being displayed on your desktop the amount of network consumed for both of them is way too different is way too different okay uh, uh, that that is one of the reasons again i would say bala to your answer to your question mobile apk or a mobile package is always best okay it loads the application on the it, it loads the complete application at the same time you are consuming the minimal amount of network bandwidth at the same time you are also consuming the minimal amount of cpu and memory as well not to mention at times have you seen when you install something on your mobile i'm not sure guys i'm going to intricate on this right maybe if you install something on your mobile the mobile gets heated up have you observed that yes okay so guys that is another factor when it comes to a, a difference between an actual web based load test or sorry a, a web based uh, performance and a, a mobile based performance with mobile based performance you also have to be so mindful about your uh, drivers that they don't get over consumed okay uh, or else you will just have your mobile uh, being frozen up and the best way to restart a frozen mobile is to reboot okay uh, that doesn't happen with your desktop you open a web page maximum what you do is you right click go to task manager get rid of the browser itself right so that's that's another uh, difference between a mobile based performance and a uh, uh, desktop or a laptop based performance uh, architecture okay guys i think we are almost uh, to the end of the we are we are over and above the time uh, let me see what uh, place have we reached on our slides just give me one second uh okay uh yeah i i would want to cover this piece tomorrow because this is important and i want to give it its due justification due time uh but so far i'm not going to keep the theory so guys here's the thing right uh when we say theory i don't want it to be bo sounding boring at all 
I want you all to be able to relate with it. Now, I hope the theory that we covered today, uh, don't, please don't, I want to request, please don't treat it as a theory and a, like a, maybe yeah, the real action gets started tomorrow or the next weekend when we actually do the scripting. Well, that is true. That is good as an individual contributor, but going forward, you would want to have a perspective as to how things work, where the bottle, bottleneck identification. So tomorrow, if you'll ask me, hey guys, Sandeep, we have not, uh, Sandeep, we have not really covered any mobile analysis or bottleneck, uh, bottleneck identification analysis. We have not done any of that. Well, I would say class one, okay. Uh, we did all of that right from the uh, uh, component level thing and where, what all areas can be identify areas of bottlenecks as well. And we will do that, okay. We will continue to do that. Uh, tomorrow, I would also again would want to just highlight a couple of bottleneck items with regards to this one and this one for sure. Okay, um, I I believe uh, we are we are good for today. Uh, if there are any questions, we can take them now. Yes, any questions so far? Yeah, Sandeep, I just want to add one more point. Uh, you have mentioned right, like what are the expectations you have mentioned somewhere yeah i want to just add one more point like android or ios profiler okay all right okay yeah. anything else Chandan? no i'm good okay uh, Chandan, is it making sense? Is it is it kind of being relative? Uh, Chandan, couldn't couldn't hear you. Is the is the content kind of making sense? Is it relevant to you? Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. Good. How about other guys? Are we good? Yes. 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 Sir. yes. Good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was I was I was skeptical and worried about the part. Uh, hurry to your question. Which version of LR? Anything above 12.60 or 12.55 is good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Murli, uh, yeah, Murli was there earlier. Murli, we took your round of introduction, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, sorry. I think there was a person called Rupa who stepped in and uh, got dropped. Okay. Fine, great. So, guys, uh, that's about it for today. Uh, we will have, uh, we will see you all again tomorrow, uh, same time. I won't say same place because we are all online. Uh, and uh, I think uh, that, that's about it. Yeah. So, you, yeah. Will be Sandeep. Sharing, you will be sharing this PPT today? Yes, I'll share the deck. I'll share the PPT. Also, one more thing in the group, in the group as well, I would really appreciate if you all could put up the response for. Uh, the today's demo session uh, it holds importance it holds importance with the fact that uh, how are we steering towards it that's something which we want to know yeah sure um, um sorry i came i, I joined late um yes sir i'm gonna i'm gonna have this session on daily basis and secondly may, may i know your name please i'm sorry about that sure uh Sano, my name is sandeep and uh, to answer your question uh, we are only going to have these sessions on weekend basis. Uh, my question to the team would be, uh, are we good to have two days on the weekends, like Saturday and Sunday, or are we wanting to have one day and, you know, at a stretch, we take three hours? It's going to be a 1.5 no. hour session. It will be better to have two days. Yeah, two it, days be great, uh, yeah. it is good to have on Saturday and Sunday, uh, Sandeep. Yeah. Correct. Yes, Saturday, Sunday is fine. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Fine. Then uh, I think that we can call it a close. Uh, please, again, a reminder, mention your feedback in the group. Uh, it, it will help me understand uh, as to what I'm doing. Yeah. Sa Sandeep, so I joined uh, five minutes late. So, uh, like, can you please tell uh, us about yourself? Because I don't know, like, what your experience and everything is. Right. Uh, so, Chandan, uh, thank you. I'll for bringing that up. I, I, I missed on introducing myself. Uh, my name is Sandeep. I am uh, I'm working. Uh, I, I was working with Cognizant earlier, and uh, as of now, I am primarily helping people educate with their 
performance testing aspect. My overall experience is about 10 plus. Uh, I have worked in a lot of uh, uh, domains, which involves right from BFSI to travel to uh, to hotel to uh, different different levels of uh, domains when it comes to applications. When it comes to testing, uh, I am an end-to-end guy whom you can connect with, uh, which is uh, primarily on the uh, performance and automation aspect. Uh, I am also looking into DevOps implementation within projects. I I cater to those. I help people who would also want to have QA-based practices. I'm not I'm not talking about manual testing strategy practices only, but I'm talking about overall highly efficient QA-based practices incorporated in their project. Uh, that is uh, a quick uh, nutshell about me. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chandan. Okay, uh, guys. With that, we'll call it an uh, call it an end. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, all at seven o'clock. Uh, Sandeep, I'm... may I know your full name? Uh, Sandeep Chandekar. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.